Hi and welcome back to this uh, repair of this GEC radio here. Currently I'm reforming the uh, electrolytic capacitors. There's two here in a in a can. I've got my reforming unit there sticking out a nominal 320 volts and I'm monitoring the voltage across a 100R resistor inside the case there on my avometer set on the 2.5 volt scale. And as you can see, we're about 250 millivolts there. So that's about 2.5 milliamps of current, leakage current. So they're reforming, or this side is reforming reasonably well. I'm just going to measure the voltage uh, on my fluke meter here. Um, when I started off, we were getting about 250 volts. Um, what I'm going to do is follow this orange wire across here and I'm going to connect, uh, I'm going to probe that point there just to save getting in there and possibly shorting something out. So I measure across there and we're getting about 302 volts which is much better because you want to see the leakage current come down and the voltage go up. So the other side reformed quite nicely as well. It's not perfect by any means but it is uh, what is it 70 years old now 60 70 years old um, so uh, quite happy with that perhaps it's a new can actually I can see possibly someone's resoldered um, these wires possibly they don't look as dull as some of the other wiring here which I guess is uh, uh, original so maybe someone's put a new can in there I haven't had the chassis out yet to uh, to check the date on the can. So anyway, quite happy with that. Um, I've got the valves out, of course, or, or the rectifier and the audio output valve um, while I reform the caps, certainly the uh, rectifier. And um, I've got various voltages uh, around the circuit as well, like uh, on the IFs and things. So as I said in the first video, I think this radio is pretty much ready to go um, as it is and what it will just re need uh, doing is just these last few uh, old wax capacitors uh, replaced, um, switch cleaning um, and general oiling and things like that for the uh, tuning uh, mechanism and the tuning capacitor. Um, and then it's basically just uh, uh, cosmetic work, I think. So um, what I'm going to do is uh, take it outside, get the chassis out and um, see how that goes. Right, here we are with the chassis out of the cabinet and cleaned a little bit. Um, as you can see, if I get down, there's a little tear in the cabinet there. It looks like uh, something's been push through or something either from this side or the other side I'll get a couple of um, uh, cigarette papers and some PVA glue and try and fix that the other thing um, and I looked at the chassis and there's some rust spots on it but it's just surface rust really I'm not sure I was gonna I was thinking of stripping this completely down and repainting it but I'm not sure if it's that far gone the transformer, however, is another thing that really needs re repainting. Um, but uh, yeah, I've given the inside of the where the scale glass sits over this. Obviously, is a light bulb, and. Uh, and that a clean that's come up okay but might need another coat of paint which will mean removal so I'm sort of in two minds whether to uh, strip it all all off and repaint it or not it's not a very valuable radio or anything it's not particularly rare now the cabinet now uh, Cleaned a little bit this little patch here. I don't know if you can see that if I do the light. So it's just surface dirt, really. I think this radio was in use 
until relatively recently when it went in the loft. There was uh, a few spider webs inside and lots of dust and dirt really on that was mainly on the outside of the cabinet so perhaps someone fixed this and then uh, wrapped it in a blanket or something and put it away. Inside of the cabinet scale glass is uh, I've had experience with these before <laughs> and cut myself on these spring clips that hold the dial glass in and there's the speaker the recess where that goes in so yeah it's a one piece moulded cabinet very clever I'd like to see the mould actually in don't know if you can see the different layers here quite clever I like this cabinet very nice so all this I'm gonna give this a light sand and respray it because there's some worn marks where the uh, volume control is and some general dings and dents where the paint's flaked off so I'm gonna respray this for, for sure just like my other one and um, I notice on the bottom that I think is Brasso I think or some sort of polish definitely looks like Brasso so I think someone's uh, looked after this radio so I've got a big decision now do I strip all this down or not I think what I'm going to do first is just um, get all the dirt off the cabinet and what dirt I can from here and then I'm going to put, put the chassis back in the cabinet and I'm going to um, apply power because I'm, I'm pretty confident this is going to work straight away I mean you know they usually do it's not often you get a major fault other than um, you know having to replace uh, components like uh, like uh, these things and I don't know what I'm going to do about this either I think I might try and tuck this back in the chassis because the back doesn't fit properly with this old um, sleeving it's quite a tight fit so I might reroute it along the back here but there's a nice hole in the side of the cabinet anyway so what I'm going to do now is just um, spritz the cabinet with a bit of water and then give it a wipe over with a cloth and just get the just get the dirt off and it's quite got quite a nice figure in it here, you can see. With a little bit of water, that's what it'll look like. And it's all polished up. Yeah, very nice. Right, um, thanks for watching and um, maybe the next video we'll um, apply some power. Right, here we go, we're uh, about to power the radio up. Um, I'm on steady cam at the moment, or rather unsteady cam. Um, I've plugged the rectifier, sorry, I've switched the set on, taken all the valves out, switched the set on to check um, both sides of the rectifier here because they should of course be equal. If they're not equal, um, then you've got a problem with the transformer. They checked out okay. I've given it the chassis a cursory clean got some rust off the control shaft here um, luckily that while that was rusty a lot of it's been protected by the grease that people use to boil the string because as you know string needs grease to make it work um, what else have I done? Oh I've worked on the speaker I've uh, resprayed the speaker because that was quite rusty um, and I've repaired a couple of rips in the speaker cone 
with PVA glue and cigarette papers and because you see the uh, the outside edge, the uh, wrinkled edge for want of a better word that seemed to be quite frail actually so uh, I've given it a very thin wash of PVA glue just to stiffen it up slightly because that did seem it was on the verge of ripping um, all, all the way around right got the lamp limiter on um, or in sorry it's on limited uh, current here I'm going to try it and I think this radio is going to work I don't see why it won't I think someone's um, as I said in previous uh, shots that I've done in this series I think someone's had this working relatively easy, uh, relatively uh, recently uh, you know maybe in the 70s or 80s or something anyway cut the waffling powers on um, let's switch it on and see where we go the stations are going to be down the bottom end of the band I think I've got it on medium wave but let's let's have a little listen bulbs dimmed right down which is good Nothing as much is happening at the moment. Ah. There we go. Oscar Wilde's reflection on the Victorian penal system. That must be Radio 4, I guess. So I had it set on long wave actually. So I'm just going to turn back the other way. There we go. And I that's in and out of the that's a, this is a football match or soccer, that's Arsenal v Crystal Palace. That's on limited current here, so let's just try it. The bulb's not changed. Well, turn it off. Well, that seems to work. What I'm going to do is just flip it over and uh, check some uh, voltages. Right, I'm now in a position to start taking some DC uh, voltage measurements. Now, um, on the old service uh, sheets here, there's usually like a valve analysis uh, table, and that gives the key uh, voltage measurements for some of the valves. On the trader sheets, it's uh, the anode and the screen volts where, uh, where it's needed. Um, and they also tell you what the AC mains input was. In this case, it was 220 volts and they tell you what measurements they made it with in this case um, the old AVO electronic test meter which was uh, sort of like a valve voltmeter really um, mostly they'd use um, a 20k per volt impedance uh, AVO something like this one like the Simpson 260 series um, anyone in uh, the UK would know what an AVO was um, in this case I'm using a 10 meg ohm um, impedance fluke so therefore the circuit loading will be lower using this meter and I would expect the voltages to be a little bit higher so these are only a guide really um, you've got to make uh, allowance for your mains input and the sort of meter you, you, uh, you're going to use so before we start if you're uh, new here um, and just watching along because you want to uh, restore a valve radio I would warn you that this is 
where you can really zap yourself. There's everything from exposed mains voltage on this lead here. I've got it plugged in um, and on at the socket below, but the set itself is not on. But that doesn't matter. There's still mains potential between here and here. Um, also on some sets, the mains comes in via a voltage tag, like this thing here. Remember, um, in this particular case, this isn't live at the moment, but as soon as I switch the set on, that becomes full mains potential. So just be careful, don't go brushing your hands uh, against it. In fact, what I really recommend, um, if you're new to the hobby and just going to start uh, measuring uh, voltages inside is unplug the set completely from the, from the from the mains just read your notes read this and have a practice just measure where you want to try not to make any measurements that are going to short out across another uh, valve pin or anything and just practice without any power um, and then when you um, you know when you go to apply uh, power you'll sort of have it in your mind what you need to touch and uh, where to take your measurement so um, right with that waffle out of the way let's switch on and um, see what we get as I said earlier I measured the anode uh, voltages um, on the rectifier um, and they were both the same um, so that sort of proves the transformers okay right we're now going to measure the uh, anode voltage of the audio output tube which should be 295 volts and I'm getting 261 and it's dropping 259 I did I filmed this little bit a video uh, about 10 minutes ago actually and the set started off about 270, 280 and is slowly dropping I suspect it might be this capacitor because that's taking power through the capacitor into here We're at 258 and dropping the screen should be 200 and I'm getting 184 right now the anode here should be on V3 should be 100 volts and I'm getting 82.4 there is a resistor in the way here so that's dropping some voltage but 85 volts which should be a hundred now onto the anode of V2 which should be 200 volts and that's coming from one of the IF transformers here so that pin would do just nicely here 184 volts and lastly uh, the anode of V1 which also should be 200 volts and where's that little baby? Not that one. Not that one. Where am I going? One, two, three, four. It's this one. I'm getting 95.8 volts here. So there's probably... Um, that cap's got to go. Um, I'm going to check some of the important resistors like this one, but um, let's have a look. 259. I might actually switch this on and leave it on for 10 minutes and then monitor the voltage on this cap. Because while that uh, electrolytic uh, reformed quite nicely, or so it seemed, it does, I wonder, point to this electrolytic not putting out enough it is after all about 65 years yeah it's dropping slightly so I'm getting 185 on this side and 266 on this side 
with this capacitor slowly dropping it's becoming a resistor isn't it as it's warming up so I'm going to pull that capacitor and um, see what happens if the stability of the voltage measurement improves if not then obviously the uh, electrolytic the double uh, electrolytic here has got to go um, while I'm replacing that capacitor I'll probably pull these as well one two three four I've got to come out and then we'll see how we get on right thanks for watching